Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Facebook Live with the Phototherapy Group. I'm joined by uh, my good friend, uh, Alec uh, Ahrens, who put this together. Alec, how are you? I'm good, Rick. How are you? Well, I'm so excited. <laughs> you know, I love doing these. You know, uh, it's a lot of work, you know, putting the, put, picking the pictures, setting it up. I know behind the scenes you do a ton of work. So I really want to thank you. But uh, mostly I want to thank the members. You know, we started this uh, group uh I think about six weeks ago, we have 1,500 members and, you know, the people are using the topics now. So it's easy for us and for them to find like flower photo flower photographs, which is a topic for uh, today. Yeah, and I really want to thank everybody for starting to get, get uh, habit forming around adding the topics. It just makes, uh, makes it a lot easier as we grow. You know, that's for sure. You know, I've been a pro for a long time. And uh, one of the things I find about the phototherapy uh, Facebook group is that some of these pictures, many of the pictures are very humbling. Yeah, <laughs> you know, are. you know, my gosh, I look I look at these pictures and I say, I, how come I didn't think of that? You know, sometimes when I'm giving a workshop, I'm up there. And people are saying, hey, Rick, you know, what's your f-stop, meaning, you know, what, what's your, what settings are you using? And they try to follow my advice. But man, oh, man, I, as a pro, I am learning so much. I am learning so much from this. So it's, uh, it's really a growing experience for uh, all, the, all, the, uh, all the members, including the pros like Juan Pons. Juan, uh, oh, yeah, we should mention that the reason um, Juan is not here for happy hour when we're doing this pop-up session, he has a private workshop uh, down in, uh, I think, North Carolina. So we're really uh, glad that uh, Alec uh, put this together. We want to welcome um, Stephen is here, uh, Jennifer, uh, Gretchen. Uh, let me see who else is here. I can't see who else is here. But Alec, uh, why don't we try to get going with the picture? So what we're going to do is, uh, you know, I went through the pictures. We have about 30 pictures. We had more than 300, 300 uh, posts with a flower topic on there. So it's really hard to pick like the best. So this is this may this is like, you know, some of our favorite pictures. There are other ones that may be better, but what I tried to do is I tried to pick pictures that illustrated a different a technique or a different topic so we could all learn from this. So I'm going to comment on them. But, my friends, I see Claude is here. Claude uh, made it. Uh, yeah, some people thought we were going to be on Zoom. So, Claude, uh, thank you for being here. Robert is here. Um, yeah, we're going to be – We're this is Facebook Live next week. Uh, just to keep things interesting, we're going to go back to the uh, Zoom call. So, Alec, why don't we uh, get going with the uh, slides, uh, get the first one up there, and let me know when it's up. It's up. Okay. Uh, I don't see us in the bottom right-hand corner. But uh, that's okay. We definitely want people to uh, to add their comments and suggestions. Oh, Jean Ann is here. Oh, Jay is here, and Jim is here. Okay. So what I liked about this photograph is, you know, the mood and the feeling. I always say that's the most important thing in a photograph. It's the mood. It's the feeling. But I love the shallow depth of field. I photographed the same type of flower before, and I've always shot it straight on because it looks like an alien face when shot straight straight on. Uh, and now we're seeing Alex. Uh, Alex's uh, yes. China. I'm sorry. I, I uh, let me get that back. Well, that was a great experience too. Which uh, you know, yeah. what this picture illustrates that was illustrating the rule of odds and separation. But anyway, uh, I love the soft feeling of this. Also, the sh very shallow depth of field. And that is shot at an angle. You know, I never thought of shooting this at an angle. But, you know, in close-up photography, in flower photography, your aperture is really, really important. Because even at f22, your depth of field is very, very uh, shallow. And also how the subject is going from the bottom uh, uh, right to the top left. So I think this is really, uh, hey, Phyllis, how you doing? And Tommy Armstrong is here. You can see us both. Uh, yeah, this looks, uh, this is one of my favorite uh, pictures from uh, one of my favorite photo workshop participants who's friends with uh, Linda who does the meditation Monday. So if we could go to the next one, Alec. Okay, a high key shot. 
you know, high key portraits. High key portraits are are very uh, stunning. You see this in fashion magazines, meaning there's a lot of whites in the picture as opposed to like a low key picture, which has a lot of darks. Uh, so, Carolyn, I think you did an amazing job here choosing, you know, to use a high key effect, a high key, uh, you know, processing effect in this uh, for this uh, picture. Also, it's shot at a little bit of an angle. And that is a little uh, movement to the picture rather than having the stem going straight up and down, going from the uh, kind of like from the bottom right to the top left. Also, you know, Ansel Adams said that a uh, picture's never done until you darken the edges. <laughs> well, <laughs> here, you know, he, you know, another tech, another idea is a picture's not done until you lighten the edges. And look at the comments we have here. You know, brilliant, uh, nice shot, great control of light. Wow, beautiful. Uh, Jim says, what a wonderful high key, high key photo. So this is the kind of thing that we're really loving about the Phototherapy Facebook group, that there's so many uh, comments and so much participation. Okay. This one. Let me go back, Rick. Sorry. Okay. Okay, we're good. We're on uh, Gary's picture now. Uh, yes. Well, actually, yeah, Gary's picture. Now. Yeah, this looks like a painting to me. This is a very painterly quality. And, you know, I use Topaz Impression to do this. There's a lot of textures you can add to do it. Um, I, I forget the name of the uh, effect. Uh, maybe Phyllis or Tom Reese can look it up while we're speaking because I know they're, they're good at multitasking. And it was called the smoke effect. And he did this with the Mona Lisa. And it made the background look... Uh, out of focus. So this kind of has that Leonardo da Vinci, you know, uh, smoke effect. Also like that, the fact that the subject is off center, you know, that main subject. So we have a little detail there, but we have a painterly look like off to the uh, left. So Gary, you did a great job on this one. Okay. And I'm also, I, I think uh, I'm getting the thumbs up now that my sound is back. There was some mysterious uh, drop in my sound, but Hopefully it's back. Um, so if we could just have somebody pop in and confirm that, that would be that would be great. And we'll move on to our next image. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, I know Nancy Lee very well, and I've watched her grow as a photographer. And uh, in the beginning of the uh, lockdown, and by the way, speaking of that, we know there's a lot of. Um, craziness going on in our country and around the world and we never talk about that here on the photo uh, therapy facebook group because we want this to be a total escape uh for everyone to just think about how wonderful uh, your photography is how important it is to you and how um, how we can really you know be creative so uh, you know we know all this stuff is going on but uh, we really just want to focus on photography. So this is an almost totally soft, out-of-focus picture. So I've watched Nancy Lee grow in the beginning, again, of the lockdown. She said, oh, you know, what am I going to do, being home, whatever. She has grown so much as a photographer. She has made some amazing, amazing pictures. And I'll just tell a joke here. Uh, you know, there's a joke. A one out-of-focus picture is a mistake. 20 out-of-focus pictures is a style. And this might <laughs> illustrate that. It's not. There's a difference, by the way, between soft focus and out of focus. So this is mostly a soft focus picture. Another thing I like about this is that most people photograph flowers from the front, right, Alec? Absolutely. And she photographed it, you know, from the side and the back. So I thought this was uh, very creative. So don't always have to photograph uh, something, to, any subject, you know, straight on. You know, if you're on a safari in Africa and you have like you're photographing a zebra or an elephant, maybe, you know, photographing the zebra or the elephant from behind isn't the greatest idea. <laughs> but for flowers, I think it uh, really works. Okay. What do you think about this picture, Alex? Alex? Um, it's, uh, well, I, are you asking me about the, about Nancy's or are you asking me, I actually advanced it on. Yeah. Yeah. Chris's picture. I, I love, I love the picture. I love, I love the complimentary colors on this. Yeah. Now that's what strikes me is just the, you know, again, you're, you're drawn to the, the way that it's layered that you actually, you know, you're drawn to the foreground then you work yourself into the middle and then the background and the, the colors on it are, are terrific. Uh, we want to thank Phyllis. She looked up the Leonardo da Vinci effect, so we want to thank you. You could just check the comments over there, so thank you, Phyllis. Yeah, you know, the first time I saw this, 
And I said, you know, I wouldn't have included that little like uh, bridge in the background or walkway. But I think it adds something to it. You know, cropping is very subjective. And by, uh, you know, cropping, we can create our own reality. So at first I said, oh, I would have taken that out. But I think it really adds to the picture. So, Chris, uh, great job. And that also has a very soft, uh, soft look. You know, I've been playing around with people's uh, pictures. And usually people post underexposed pictures, meaning the histograms not moved to the right. I did one today for John Beck. And he liked it. But here, you know, we don't always have to move it to the right. I just uh, love that this is like a little underexposed. You know, you remember, Alec, when we were growing up, we used to watch the Lone Ranger on TV. And, I do. You know, and when he was riding, supposedly riding at night, you know, you could see the strong shadows. They just underexposed the black and white film, you know, by about three, the movie film by about three stops. So I really like this. Also, also, also the separation. Uh I really like that the separation. So uh, again, I'm learning. I'm learning so much. Can yeah, you there's get? A, there's a comment from you know Tom, our friend Tommy Armstrong. It puts yeah. it into context, right? You get a sense of where the where the picture was taken, right? Y you know? Yes. Yeah, that gives a context. Uh, right. Envi so you get a sense of the environment. That's the word that I was uh, I was trying to get to the environment in which it was uh, which it was taken. Yeah, Robert says the colors work well. So on the next shot, uh, this is this is really cool. Um, you can do this in camera. Uh, it's not that easy to do. Um, what you do is you use a slow shutter speed and you twirl the camera. It's like a panning effect, right? So you twirl the camera from like uh, from like horizontal. Uh, from vertical to horizontal to vertical again, right? So without stopping, and you take the picture like at one point. If you stop, I don't know if people can see my hands. Alice, can people see my hands? They can. Yeah. So in other words, you, ju you just have to keep going like that. And if you stop, it's not going to happen. So uh, I, I teach this swirl effect on some of my workshops. It's not easy to get. You could also do it in Photoshop with the radio blur tool. But again, we pick these pictures to, get, to try to give you uh, – some interesting ideas. So you could take a picture. Nancy Lee Mudd, uh, maybe you could try this uh, on one of your next uh, indoor pictures. But I think it's really creative. This, my friend Gary uh, Potts says uh, he likes pictures with impact. And I think that swirl effect, you know, t t takes out some of the reality from this picture. So I, I really like the way that uh, looks. So it's Tommy cool. asks, uh, do you use the motor drive when you're twirling? So Yes, it's that's a good point. Yes. Definitely use the motor drive, and it also helps. Actually, with uh, with the point and shoot camera, it's a little easier to do because you can look at the screen, you know, on the back of the camera. So I do this with my uh, Canon like G7. With the digital SLR, it's a little harder uh, if you don't have a, a, a screen on the back. But uh, you have to take a lot of shots, as people have done. A, a, People who have been in my workshops know you have to take a lot of shots to get it right. But again, you can do it in Photoshop with the uh, radio blur tool. But I just I just love the colors too, right? Yeah, the colors are great. And I actually see it almost looks like an insect to me, right square in the center of it. Yeah, it looks like a face, right? It looks like a little face with uh, buck teeth. It looks like, right. yeah, with buck teeth. Hey, uh, Linda here is uh, who does the meditation Monday, so we're glad to see here. Uh, Carol uh, Vipperman, uh, yeah, actually she knows. <laughs> I, I showed Carol, I think about 15 years ago, we were doing this out in a Mount Rainier. Does it work uh, with the lens baby twist? I'm not sure because I don't use the lens baby. Okay, this shot, you know, talk about uh, impact and talk about picking the pictures, you know, that illustrate different points. Um, I love the colors, but I love the backlight here, right? The backlight coming yeah. through this uh, bleeding heart. It's a bleeding heart. Uh, it just looks so, so beautiful. This also looks like uh, like some kind of insect, right? Or a turtle, like, like if it's like, you know, facing yeah, downward. No, it, it looks like it, yeah, it looks like it could be swimming or flying or something. So what I like about this is the shallow depth of field. I love the green in the back, the green and the black in the back. And I love the and I love the backlight. Uh, when you're just a tip for when you're um, shooting uh, a backlit 
actually when you're always shooting, but especially when a back when you're photographing a backlit subject, definitely have your highlight alert on and your histogram activated because you don't want the highlights uh, overexposed and washed out. Okay, Cal Carol says you don't need to move it physically. The twist does it for you. So see, this is one of the things that uh, I said I love about uh, the phototherapy group. I'm always learning and the members are always learning. Maybe Carol, you can, Carol's out in Seattle. Maybe you could post some of your pictures. I think people would uh, love to uh, see them. Any way to go full screen with the pictures? Um, that I don't know. And since we never tried it, I don't, oh, I know what he's saying. He's, hey, Juan Pons. Oh, no. Uh, oh, that was an email from Juan. I thought he was commenting. Uh, I think uh, go full screen. Yes, Alec, I think if you press play. Yeah, I don't know what I will see. We'll give it a shot. Yeah. Is that okay. better, uh, Tommy? Or who asked that? Claude. And this is the first time we're doing it. And this is Phyllis Webster's uh, awesome picture. I like, I like this. This guy is coming out of the wormhole. <laughs> That's funny, Tommy. Tommy has a great eye. Anyway, I love this picture uh, because the subject really stands out. It really stands out. Uh, the white, again, exposing for the highlights. We can see detail in those white petals. And if... Uh, if your highlights are overexposed even more than a stop, uh, it's pretty hard to get them back uh, in Photoshop and Lightroom. So, Phyllis, you did a great job with the exposure, but also I like the way, you know, the the uh, the lily pads, I guess the lily pads, you know, frame the subject. Your eye is drawn right. And, you know, one of my salmonisms is a dead center is deadly. And uh, this is a – and I also say I didn't write the rules of composition – so why the heck should I uh, follow them? Here, dead center works uh, uh, perfectly. So, okay, good. So Claude says it's full screen, and uh, Robert, so this is the way to go. Okay, talk about a painting. Man, oh man, Pamela, who posts a ton of pictures here. I like the texture in here. I like the composition. I like the separation. Uh, I like the, uh, the, um, the level at which she shot. You know, when I photograph a person, I say if you see eye to eye and shoot eye to eye, the person relating, looking at the photograph can relate more to the uh, subject. So I love, I love that she's at this level. Uh, every important element is virtually separated. And here's a here's a tip when you're processing a picture. You know, we all like pictures with super saturation. Uh, you know, we want the most vivid picture possible. Well, if you oversatch, if you oversaturate an image, you can lose detail in the saturated part. So this is why most photographers like to use vibrance rather than uh, vibrance rather than uh, saturation, because when you use vibrance, it saturates the colors that aren't already saturated. Uh, but really, Pamela DeCamp, you did a, a great job here. Uh, okay, Tom Reese says this is much better after Alec press play. Gets rid of the slideshow. Okay, cool. Another right. Kate. Look at this. Kate, another uh, painting, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, this is I, just incredible. I, it just, I could look at this all night. And she says playing with textures. And I think this is really important to think about. You know, we take our f photography so seriously. We want to do the best job. And we're pixel peeping. We're zooming in 400% to get the, or more to get the, you know, uh, to see if we have any noise in the picture. I mean, playing is the key. And I think we were talking about this with uh, someone else. I forget, Alec. We were talking recently about how to be a kid and that we lose some of our... Uh, childlike uh feel yeah you're right yeah and you know we used to put pictures on the refrigerator because we played and we were just having fun so i think this is a great example of what happens when you play play with fun uh, play with uh textures i just love this also it illustrates the rule of odds also illustrates that uh subjects don't always have to be separated but i think it's it's the mood and the feeling and how the the texture really complements yeah. Oh, Phyllis says, uh, thanks for uh, posting your processing. Lovely. Oh, Linda says, this is amazing. 
Okay, just uh, uh, here's another picture from uh, Carol. I love this shot because you're looking right into the subject. Uh, another photography tip is the uh, the closer you are to the subject, the more intimate the picture becomes. Which is why I personally like photographing people mostly with wide angle lenses because I can get close, like a 35 millimeter lens. Also, I love the water droplets. Okay, so since Carol's on, I have to ask her. Uh, are these natural water droplets or did she spray? Spray. Because sometimes, uh, you know, I've done that and flower photographers, uh, professional flower photographers uh, do this to add a little bit of, uh, you know, a natural texture. So I think this is really, uh, this is a, I've also seen someone do something that I don't like doing. You can get, <laughs> see these water droplets are going to move, right? And they're going to dry up. I was uh, watching one uh flower photographer once put a glycerin on the flowers mm. which is of course not good for the flowers so i've seen a lot of uh, you know the most important thing we've talked about this is to respect the uh, respect the subject whether it's a flower a person an animal right yeah and carol carol uh puts in the chat that it's natural after a rain uh well, Carol has a good eye. Carol is another one. Uh, she, uh, I did a creative live show. I forget. Carol remembers. Maybe you could post it. Uh, it must have been 10 years ago. And uh, we met out at Mount Rainier on a workshop, actually, with, uh, with Juan Pons. And uh, I've watched her grow. She's done. She, does, she has a blog. Uh, maybe, Carol, you could post it. Camera walking, where she walks around with the camera. She's a very creative person, a very good person. And, um, again, one of the things I... I keep saying one of the things. There's so many things I love about the Facebook group, including all the uh, uh, all the positive comments. I, again, this could have been ruined by a slight overexposure, and she has a perfect exposure here. Well, another tip you could illustrate is the name of the game is to fill the frame. Okay, Rob Smith. Rob posts a lot of pictures here. This picture. I'll let you go, Alec. Uh, or uh, wh what do you think of this? I mean, again, I you know I just uh, the vividness of the white and the yellow coming up through the light in terms of the background, and then you know the the center of the image. It's just um, it's bold and soft at the at the same time, and you know, and like many of the pictures, it just. You really have to stop and look at the flowers and everything around you, right? Because what Rob saw here and what he interpreted is just pretty, you know, pretty interesting. So he grows these. So this helps, right? Uh, I've been photographing a lot of birds lately. So, you know, we have bird, bird uh, seed in the backyard of bird feeders. So, you know, knowing the subject is really important. Pat says outstanding. Uh, Sylvia says uh, beautiful. I say a nice way to start the day. Yeah, you know, maybe the reason I said that is uh, it looks like, you know what, now that I think about that, it looks like this flower's waking up to me, right? Mm. It looks like it's unfolding, those beautiful, like, uh, the petals around the center that you said look bold. The way they're, like, unfolding is just beautiful. And again, not an easy, uh, oh, Bonnie just got here. Glad Bonnie's here. Uh not an easy exposure to get. You know, I've seen so many pictures where the whites are, are overexposed, you know, and right. washed and washed out. I think this is just really, a, really a super picture. And again, one of the pictures I, I wish I, ta I had taken. So I'm getting a lot of ideas for uh, flower photography. And thank you, Carol. Uh, actually, she, Carol indicates that it's a Facebook page, Camera Walking and a blog at her name. So I know everybody can see the comments and, and see the spelling of Carol's name. So you can uh, follow her. Okay, so Tommy asked someone, I don't know who he's asking, do you ever use a, a gray card? Uh, which I used when uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I was shooting film. And uh, some photographers use gray cards today. What it does is you take a picture of it, you set your exposure, and it's really setting the camera for the right exposure. Most people today that I know who want serious colors, and we'll talk about this outstanding picture in a second, use something called the uh, passport color checker. It's about the size of a 
passport <laughs> and it lets you check your colors. It has like a, a color pattern on it. So you can put it in your uh, in your pocket, in your camera bag or whatever, and it lets you calibrate your camera, uh, which is important if you want accurate colors. A lot of times I warm up my pictures because I want them to have like, a, you know, a warmer look. But say you're uh, Marsha. If uh, she's taking this picture for National Geographic and she's working with a flower scientist, a botanist or, or whatever, and, that's, and, the, and the scientist said, okay, I need 100% accurate color. This is when something like the color checker, the passport, uh, X-ray, a passport color checker would come in. So what you do is you use that and then you download software and you could calibrate your camera through uh, uh, Photoshop and uh, Lightroom. Oh, David Stern just arrived. He's been... Um, uh, posting some amazing uh, images. Rob Smith says about Marsha's picture. Okay, uh, we should talk about this. Again, it's you're, you're like peering in. It's like uh, this the flower the inside is like uh, it's like it's like shrouded in, in again a great exposure shrouded by the petals around. What I like yeah, about the, go ahead. No, it's as you say, shroud. I looked at it like it's just a cocoon around it. Yeah, right? it, it, to just keep it, you know, perfect. Keep it perfectly safe. Yeah, it like keeps it safe, and uh, well, you know what? That's probably how it evolved, right? Right. I mean, these things just don't happen for an accident. I also like the fact that there's a lot of a lot of other things going on around the scene. Some photographers might have said, "Oh, you know that cocoon, as you put it, Alec, looks, um, you know, like it's keeping it safe." A lot of people said, oh, "I'm going to crop it really tight because I want to show that." But I think with that, this like it's like a landscape almost, right? Yeah, <laughs> no, it shows you the scene, the environment, the scene, it, clearly. Oh, Phyllis yeah. loves loves this. Amira is loving this. Uh, Steve, I've never. S- I've never, I've never. He's not bothered. a flower guy. That's the essence of Stephen's comment. He's not a flower <laughs> guy. Well, uh, I was never a bird guy, a bird, backyard bird guy, and I've become like addicted to backyard to bird photography. But again, this group is called Phototherapy, and I think the people looking at this uh, this little session we're doing here, I think you can see how therapeutic, how rewarding, uh, right? I think Clearly. it's very, re- re- very rewarding when you work hard and get something. So this Magnolia Blossom picture by Marsha, uh, published just a few days ago, uh, June 12th, let's say the 18th, just a few days ago, is beautiful. And just another tip, uh, when you're photograph for uh, who's who's not into flower photography, Steve? Steve. Who, yeah. Uh, a tripod's a good accessory. Uh, a, a true macro lens. You could, you know, if you don't own a macro lens, you could rent them from Borrow Lenses or uh, Lens Rental, or uh, if you're Canon from the Canon uh, uh, CPS, Canon Professional Services. Give it a try. It's very therapeutic. Um, and just remember, everything looks good on the small screen. So if you're shooting at f22 and you think it looks sharp. Uh, you know, try uh, try some. You know, just t- take some other shots. Also, the other thing is uh, movement is exaggerated uh, the closer you are to the subject and the longer the lens. Just like with the telephoto lens, movement is exaggerated. So this is why you need a tripod or a ring light. Most of these shots, if we showed any shots here that were taken with the ring light, maybe uh, or artificial light or added light, maybe someone could uh, let me know. Because if they did, they did an excellent job of balancing the light from the uh, speed light to the available light, which is the key. But a lot of these look like uh, natural light. Uh, Okay, so Steve says, misunderstood. I don't use the – oh, he doesn't use the color checker. Oh, okay. All right. My mistakes. Uh, I apologize, Steve. And Steve gave me some very good tips earlier in the week on my – bird photo that i posted so i apologize for uh getting that incorrect we love steve he's he's on i think almost everything right yeah yeah okay Uh, paul you know this talk about an image with impact you know (coughs) uh, i knew al mulvey who's a national geographic photographer yeah i met him in in the uh late 70s yeah the late 70s and he said, if you want your picture to stand out, have red in it. <laughs> so this picture, you know, really stands out. 
And the like I was just saying about the shallow depth of field, you know, the center of that flower, right? They're they're it's so sharp and everything is. else is just just a little bit soft. So your eye goes right to that. So what I would do is I would I would recommend uh, so you did a great job here, Paul. Uh, I would recommend experimenting with different um, aperture settings. Also, experiment with different um, shooting distances. So in other words, say you're at f22 and you want to get this shot and you don't have enough depth of field. What you could do is move back an inch, shoot at f22, and you're going to have more in focus. So you just crop. And I always shoot at the lowest ISO to uh, get the cleanest possible shot. So if you're on a tripod and the flower's not moving, if it's indoors like Lance, Nancy Lee Mudd uh, uh, takes her pictures, you know, you could use a slow shutter speed. But moving back will give you a little more depth of field and you just have to crop it. And you want to shoot at a low ISO so you don't get added noise in the picture. Hey, Lynn's here. Uh, Lynn, Lynn, Lynn says, uh, you don't have to go far to shoot flowers. So she likes that. What brand of ring lights should I look at? Okay, Suzanne, this is a good question. So I'm a Canon shooter. I have a, the Canon MR14 uh, EX. Uh, if you're a Sony shooter or a Nikon shooter, I would recommend getting the dedicated, uh, dedicated uh, ring lights. I was on a workshop uh, who someone actually we would uh, who was mentioned on this uh, uh, little session we're having, and we were on a, we were down in Costa Rica, and this person had bought a, a relatively inexpensive a relatively inexpensive uh, ring light, and it didn't work. We could no one could get it to work. There were three pros there. No one could get it to work. So again, I'm Canon shooter. I use the Canon ring light, and the same thing with the speed light. Because what you, what what you want is you want the speed light, whether it's a ring light or a speed light, whatever, you want it to talk to the camera to give the right exposure information. So you can buy off-brand. Uh, you can buy off-brand uh, ring lights. And you should look at, like Canon has two. One where the ring light is just right around the camera with the MR14 EX. It's very easy to use, give soft, even lighting. You could turn off one tube so you could get side lighting. You can move it around so you get top lighting, bottom lighting, or whatever. They make another one with little flash, uh, little flashes on it. It's a little with coil cords. It's a little harder to use. So, you know, I talked about renting a, a, a macro lens. Rent, rent a ring light and see if you like it. Steve says that's me. Oh, a multiple exposure. Again, we pick different pictures to try to illustrate different things. This is an in-camera multiple exposure uh, and a texture layer added. So Jennifer Brinkman, this this caught our eye. I just think it's just uh, so unique. And then she put a looks looks like she put two frames around it. So we like the uh, we like the flower. We like the composition. We like the double exposure. We like the texture. We like uh, one frame. We like the other frame. So there's six uh, six things we like about it. I see Susan uh, 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 Dimmick. Uh, are you working with her? Oh no, you're working with you're going on the Oregon coast with another one of our Oregon. No, coast Susan. Uh, ultimately, it will be with Susan. Yeah, uh, she says beautiful. Coming from Susan, uh, that's that's a great compliment. Uh, beautiful work. Love, love, lovely colors. Ronnie, who's always uh, I, I haven't seen Ronnie here today. Uh, she's probably out shooting birds. This is so cool. It's posting pictures here is really a great way to get uh, feedback. So there's 27 likes here uh, and 10 comments. So when you post your pictures, just don't forget about them and move on to something else. Post your pictures and look at the comments. It's a it's a great way to learn. Again, people ask me for my help every once in a while, and I'm more than happy to uh, to do that. Yeah, just the as I was looking at this the other day, the depth of it and, you know, looking at the background and it's just there's just so much that just cat, you know, that you can each time you look at it, you see something new and different. Yeah, it's a very cool effect. Very well done. Well, you know, uh, Orson Welles said you have to see a movie three times to get, you know, everything out of it that the uh, that the uh, director 
or the writer wanted you to get out of it. So I think it's the same. You bring up a good point. You know, go back and look at your pictures. Oh, Pat, Pat uh, Sattler, she posts a lot of pictures here. Does this look like a painting? You know, maybe yeah, that's, mid- it's vivid. It's just so vivid. The colors, it's just. You know, it's just beautiful. Then as your eye looks to the back and you see that the way the, you know, the way that she, you know, you know, has done the background, right? And the colors on the background, it's, you know, again, this reminds me of a painting. So she got 22 likes. Yeah. A Georgia O'Keeffe, right? And if uh, everyone, if anyone wants to, hasn't looked at Georgia O'Keeffe's pictures, you should, uh, paintings, uh, do a search on her. I also like her, um, her copyright mark. And her name is on a, on an angle. Uh, just a, a quick tip here. I don't know about you, Alec. I don't know about the other people here. But when I see, you know, go on websites, and the first thing I see is a big copyright s- symbol over the picture. I'm not going. I'm not going any further. <laughs> right. 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 So having this very subtle is nice. If you want a unique signature, uh, go on the web and check out the font. Like a like a uh, like a typeface. Uh, check out the Font Brothers. You can make custom type. Uh, uh, you can put your name with this custom type, so it won't look like anything else. I use a standard one, but if you want something different, check out check out the uh, Font Brothers. This this flower also looks like it's you know waking up. It looks like it's yawning to me. You know, it's funny that we're trying to, that we put our emotions sometimes on our. And even a still picture. Yeah, I, I kind of want to look, lean to the left and look behind what I can't see. I want to know what's going in, on deep inside. Can you go back to a Pat's photograph? Because Stephen, an amazing photographer, he says, um, how many? No, no, Jim says that. Uh, Stephen says it looks like a painting. Uh, Jim says, how many exposures? To Jennifer's, uh, it, you mean? So I'll go back it, to Jennifer's. Jennifer's. Okay, so this is what I would suggest. Uh, I would su- suggest in the comment, you know, put type her name in there with the at symbol before it so she definitely sees it and ask how many exposures so we all know because I don't see uh, right there uh, how many. But this is, again, this is a great way to learn. So I'm going to be looking for that. So if you, if you could do that, uh, that would be great. Uh, to me, it looks like, uh, I don't know how many, I don't know, maybe 10, 12, 6. So how many more we got, Alec? Uh, we have, uh, this is 17 of 27, so we've got 10 more to go. Okay, we. I think our second picture was a high-key shot, right? Yeah. This is a, This is a low-key shot. Uh, and you can see that, you know, sometimes high key works and sometimes the low key works. To me, you know, one of my tips is uh, think like a painter. What would a painter do? Uh, so this is I thought this was had like a painterly may not have a painterly look because it looks like a photograph. I love the, the dew drops and I love the way the background is muted. But none of the leaves are, you know, like in the foreground are, are cropped out and the leaf in the top right isn't cropped out. So thinking like a painter, I think, is really important. So she took this at the uh, Botanical Gardens. My guess it didn't look like this, <laughs> right? It probably looked flat. So she did some – so Rob, sorry. So Rob did some work uh, on this, you know, darkening the edges, lightening, maybe uh, added some texture. But the lighting – maybe, maybe you know, he underexposed and he's a little light. I don't know. But the point is – that it just looks so beautiful because, you know, in black and white photography, contrast is king. It really is because when you take the color out, you know, contrast really is a lot. You know, contrast isn't always king in uh, flower photography, but I think the contrast here between the and the, and the pink and the green is uh, really uh, beautiful. Okay, Lynn says the other one looks like a 10 exposures. Uh, I just love these. Steven says I love these shots. I just um, noticed, Rick. We we like this one so much. It's here twice. Uh, well, uh, that's because we liked it so much. We right. we we're, we're, we're trying to give people <laughs> uh, a chance. Uh, so someone's incredible, Rob. You know, we're getting a lot of great comments here. Talk about taking some of the reality out of the scene. Uh, 
So I'll read this. I love I love uh, I love photography, especially being out in nature. It soothes my spirit. I'm also an artist. Uh, well, you know, we can see that, right? I That's mean, this, evident. That is evident. Uh, she, okay, here, not, not professionally. She's a hobbyist, right? This is what I'm talking about. Uh, this is a cover of a calendar. Mm. Some of these hobbyists are putting pros to shame. So uh, this this picture is just so beautiful. She says, I love sitting on my computer, sometimes longer than is good for me. And then the comments, uh, I can't go on and see the other comments. But, you know, she says, I think this is a good thing to think about. She says, I love sitting on my computer, sometimes longer than is good for me. Well, I forget the photographer who said this, but uh, I was at a conference once. This was like 25 years ago. And she said, uh, you can't spend too much time working on a photograph, on an image, because she's talking about painting too, because your soul is in the image. And I could see here that Jeffrey, is that how you pronounce it? Jeffrey, J-E-F-F-R-I, Jeffrey? What do you think? I think Jeffrey. Jeffrey Moore's picture, you know, this, uh, I, I don't know, I don't care how long you spent on this. This is, uh, you know, how many years did it take uh, Francis Ford Coppola to make Apoc Apocalypse Now, now. right? R right, it, right. It took him years and years. So this picture, the swirls, the movement, the this uh, the color, right? Yeah, so, no, I, it's just, you know, it speaks to how, however, much, however much time was spent on it. It is it is uh, clearly evident that there is tremendous passion involved with the way that this was all constructed and pulled together. So Phyllis says, wow, you capture the feeling of the moment beautifully. Uh, I will check out the manual. Phyllis says, simply beautiful. Uh, oh, that's about Rob's. Incredible Rob's. But look at look at the number of uh, likes here, 99 likes and 30 comments and this this isn't like instagram you know where people are yeah. like dying <laughs> dying no, to get, get likes and then you get sponsors and all this other stuff people are posting on the phototherapy facebook page i think you know as we say you know get motivated and stay inspired and i was talking to alec before this i'm having so much fun getting inspired by the work here so I'm happy spending hours a day on this page and, and looking at the work and, and getting inspired. But 99 likes and 30 comments. And this was posted only on June 11th. This yeah. was only a couple of days ago uh, yeah, also. Rick, Rick did say before we went live that he has to up his game. I definitely have to up <laughs> my game. You know, I'm working, I'm working on the bird. I'm working on the birds now. But, uh, you know, flowers. And you could go to the supermarket and buy orchids, right? What I like about this, this is the only sepia toned flower picture that we've seen. And I would say that I would never, I can't say I've never, now that I'm so inspired, <laughs> I would say I, I wouldn't think that a sepia tone, like with a brown tint, uh, it might have been done with Nick Color Effects. Nick Color Effects has a, one of the uh, filters is a paper toner. And the paper toner in Nick uh, Silver Effects in the silver effects uh, and, and color effects will give you this type of uh, feeling and this type of mood. But I think, uh, look at this. Uh, Rob says, no flowers at this stage, but a wonderful form. Oh, that, that, was, just a, that was just a comment. What do you think? I mean, the, the, the color, I think, really uh, the, adds a, a yeah, lot the, to this. The, the color is just a great choice in the way that it also, if you look at the bottom portion the contrast that's created with the water drops. Yeah. Right. You know, Again, it just, I, I wonder it if it draws you in. Okay. Another uh, botanical gardens. You know, I'll, I think the Bronx Botanical Gardens is uh, closed right now. I've been to Longwood Gardens. Have you been there? That's not far from your house, right, it's, Alex? No, it's not far and it's on the list. Uh, what town is that in? Um, About? It's not far from you. Yeah, it's in Delaware County. It's not uh, not far from me at all, no. So I would suggest uh, when when this stuff is over, uh, get a macro lens and go out and, and set a goal. Uh, set a goal to get, you know, I'm going to get a close-up picture. I'm going to get a, you, you know, most of these are close-ups. You could also use a wide-angle uh, lenses for flower photography. But it is very therapeutic. As Linda would say, you know, uh, 
when you're focused, you're like meditating. And my guess is uh, people who, especially if we could go back to the one that had so many comments that looked like a painting, the yellow one. I think it was one or two back. Yeah, yeah, this one. You know, working on this has got to be a meditative process, right? You can't, you, know, you might have some music on, but I think... Uh, the, the meditative process here is just uh, no, so you deep. are you are deep into it and thinking about it yeah you're thinking about what you want to do and I want to thank Lynn and and uh, my friend Barry because uh, Longwood Gardens is in Kennett Square PA and it is going to be reopening this week as we are in yellow heading to green in the greater Philadelphia area so thanks for Thanks for that, uh, that Barry, and uh, for the the site location, Lynn. And, and you know, a Jack Lawless. I don't know which one he's referring to, but it says reminds me of one. an, an one. octopus. Right. Yes, yeah, cool. Rob. Alec, I don't want you to um, go uh, small screen or whatever, but is that your cursor in the picture? It's like a little. There you go. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Uh, yeah, I love this. Okay, so let's go through a few more. We have some time. I hope everyone's uh, learning a lot. Uh, Joe. I met Joe. Uh, he heads up a camera club on Long Island. Talk about that. This is a combination of a couple of things we've seen, like that swirl effect, taking some of the reality out of the scene. I don't know if it's uh, – I don't think it's a multiple exposure. What is? What do they say? Uh, just a twirl in twirl. Photoshop on a second layer. Mass out to center. Okay, so this is what I was talking about, the swirl before, that you could do it in Photoshop. So the other person, uh, I, I don't remember, uh, I don't think it said whether it was natural, but you could also do this in a Photoshop. So what you do is you, uh, in Photoshop, you go to, uh, you have your picture open, you go to filter, convert for smart filter. And then once you do that, you have to have your layer, layers panel open. So it's filter, convert to smart filter. And then you could apply any filter. Uh, so whether it's the swirl filter or the motion blur filter or twirl, whatever. You could apply it. And that's like adding that on a different layer. Then you could reduce the opacity or play around with that. But it's filter, convert to smart filter. And you could do that. You could do that uh, any uh with, with any filters, including the plug-in filters. So the advantage is you could go back and forth. Where you could mask in, uh, you could mask out. Uh, and Joe's a, a very talented individual. He heads up this uh, camera club I set on Long Island. I spoke with them. I had uh, yeah, very humbling, very humbling to see some of these pictures. Another painting, right? Right. Hazel, this looks like... This looks like it could be the cover of a calendar, or a book. It looks like it could be from, you know, uh, you know, the Renaissance period. I, I, textures add a lot. If if our list, if our viewers uh, and listeners too, because they're listening, haven't played around with textures, I think if I can remember, there's like four or five pictures here that had textures. So there are sites just do a search, you know, textures. And you could download a whole bunch of different textures and, and play with them because they really take out some of the reality and it can make it look like, you know, a canvas or an oil painting uh, or uh, whatever. The blue, I mean, the green and the yellow are beautiful. I love her. I love her. You know, I'm always looking at someone's logo. So uh, Mes Meredith Images, uh, that's pretty nice. If you want that unique typeface again, it's the Font Brothers. Check that out. That is awesome by my friend Joe. So Robert knows Joe. Yeah, a lot of these should be printed on the wall. Great work. <laughs> yeah, Claude says that. Actually, we're working with uh, our friends at Printique. Uh, my friend at Printique, uh, which is the print division of Adorama, they're, they're going to be giving us a discount code. Her daughter was graduating today, so she had to... Uh, there was a drive-through graduation. I was going to so say drive-through drive, drive -through graduation. Yeah, they couldn't hop get out of the, Hop out of the car, get your diploma, and you're off. Right. So uh, she's giving us a code for calendars. Uh, if people want to make calendars of their work, they make nice gifts. Uh, for two th That would be a great way, right, to start 2021. 
with the calendar or that or printed on the wall. Uh, and it's interesting that that comment just came up, uh, that they should be uh, uh, printed on the wall. Uh, and it's interesting when you look at fine art. You know, if you're going to put a picture on the wall, it better be pretty good so no one gets bored of it after like a day, right? <laughs> so I think, you know, some of these pictures are so stunning, they fall into the... Do we have a fine art cali uh, category, Alec? I forget. We have steel like an artist. Uh, we have steel I, like an artist. I don't know if we have off the top of my head fine art, but yeah, as soon I, as I, we I, wrap up, we will. Yeah, I think we should because this falls into, like some of the other pictures, this falls into uh, the fine art uh, category. Also, unfurling. A great title, uh, Hazel. Really a great title. I say that it's a good idea to try to caption your pictures, whether it's one word. My brother is really big on one word sentences, like uh, he would say something, you know, well, he's just big on one word sentences. So if it's a one word caption or a little caption, it helps us really say what the picture is. Uh, is uh, It helps us, you know, verbalize what the picture is saying. I've said this before, Alec, you always say your camera is your microphone, right? Yes. So this has eight comments and 31 likes. So this was posted on uh, June 6th. Again, for our members, if you want to see all the flower pictures when you're on your computer, someone said you could do it on your iPad too. I guess you can't do it on your iPhone. Just go over to the top right and uh, click on the different topics. And you see uh, where you can add uh, a, a, a topic. Okay, I was joking around with Barry Good. That I said, uh, see, I say down there, hey, good. You know, that's a good photograph. Well, this is beyond uh, a good photograph. It has, I think a lot of these pictures have movement. They're still pictures, but this doesn't have any, I don't think it has too much of a special effect, maybe a little bit of blur. I think a lot of these still pictures have movement to them. And what do you think, Alec? What yeah, you no, it definitely has movement. I also think this one has mystery. Yeah, it does have a sense of uh, it does have a sense of uh, mystery uh, because you know you're looking at it, but you're looking at that 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 yellow part in there, and you're you 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 know Ansel Adams getting back to him. He said a photograph is off often looked at, not looked uh, into. So I think what you're saying, Alec, is you're looking into uh, into yeah, this. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I guess Bonnie knows uh, Hazel. Hey. Because Bonnie says, Hazel is very good at textures. Text, uh, Lynn, our friend Lynn, who I've known for a long time, says textures are so much fun. Um, Doug says, uh, check out Topaz Labs Studio 2 for textures. Uh, okay, Tommy says this is good, but you should always look at the picture, then the caption, and then back to the picture. Good advice, uh, Tommy. Oh man, oh man! Uh, when we saw when we saw this picture, look at this: ninety-eight likes, uh, eight comments. This uh, this was published earlier this month. So many people uh, loved this picture. Basically, you know, one tone. But boy, look at all you know, one color. Look at all the different variations from light yellow to medium yellow to dark yellow to really dark yellow. Uh, Talk about, you know, this looks kind of like an aperture of a lens, like opening and yeah. closing. You're looking, you're looking, um, looking into it. Uh, I'm looking at the dead center there, and I could almost see like, uh, you know, maybe like a, not 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 a face, but maybe a an yeah, eye. A, here. Yeah, an eye or a silhouette of a head of some sort of bird, since you're getting so into birds. Uh, yeah, because I'm getting into the birds. So some of the comments were. Uh, Okay, this is amazing. So Tricia said, uh, this is beautiful. I could almost smell it from here, right? So this is uh, uh, a very successful photograph. Beautiful is another one. Uh, Elizabeth says, one of the best rose photos I've ever seen. I would have to agree. Tom Reese, uh, who's posting a lot of fun pictures lately. Thanks for that. This is awesome. Uh, Sissy Fry, uh, she says, this is a gorgeous rose. And we want to uh, say, uh, give Sissy, a quick shout out because she was in the hospital with pneumonia. She was moved to the COVID ward and now she's home. Oh, so, great, great. That's great to hear. 
Yeah. And you know what? You'd, you'd never met her, right? No, but I've and, gotten to and, know and her the, through her postings. I know. And this is one of the fun things. Not, not only are we learning, we're really building a community. And down the line, we're talking about having a live phototherapy event, which is not just going to be about, you know, the exposure triangle, right? <laughs> the uh, ISO, the aperture, and the shutter speed. We're going to have discussions about why why we photograph and this is really more important i think than how we photograph which is what i talk about uh, in my in my books uh, you know once we understand why we're photographing something i think uh, it really helps okay nancy lee stuck at home mud uh, <laughs> right uh it's it's amazing she says i really think i'm making lemonade out of this time I actually created an image in Photoshop. That's funny because she uses Lightroom more. But on my workshops, I teach Photoshop more than Lightroom. Success is definitely defined by each of us, but it's always feel good, feels good. I think that is really a, a strong statement. Success is defined differently by each of us, but it always feels good. Uh, that, that yellow picture of the rose, all yellow, mostly yellow, right? This is, yep. you know, blue. It's a monochromatic, uh, basically a monochromatic image. Uh, it might look good in black and white too, but the color here, that, that soft tone, the mood and the feeling, people are really, I think, finding time now. Uh, uh, Rob Smith says perfection, Scott. Tommy, uh, this is Sorry. ridiculously good. I don't know if he's talking about the, uh, the yellow one or this one. Might have I'm been just, right as we were changing. I think Rob was talking about Scott's. Tommy, I'm not sure which one he's commenting on. Jack is uh, Jack is uh, loving this picture. Yeah, Nancy this Lee Mudd. And, and Lynn, I think, made one of the most important uh, comments so far in the last hour. We need more sushi because <laughs> I have sushi every time I uh, see her. So do we oh, have a— Oh, Tommy says they're both, they're both ridiculously good. Yeah, they're both, I mean, how humbling is this? I never thought of, you know, photographing, you know, a bunch of blue flowers in my kitchen or wherever. I know, I think Nancy is, uh, Nancy Lee is photographing this inside. But again, I, I've watched Nancy Lee grow as, as a photographer. And I talk to a lot of people who say they're stuck at home, they're bored, you know, uh, you know, I can't go to Africa on safari. And Nancy Lee and I uh, and a bunch of other people were supposed to go this year and we're and i think you're gonna you're gonna come next year when these things i think you're are you signed up for that or interested alec i forget uh, i am on the list yeah you're on the list but look look what people are doing how inspiring is this uh how motivating is this um tommy says again ridiculously good okay another beautiful one i think we're going to end with uh this one from gene we the actually back. have one. We have one more, but we'll do jeans okay. and then we'll. Oh, we, we can do that too. I, I love the colors here. I love the. You know, I think that background. I don't know whether it's nat natural or not. Uh, actually, I when I go to like garden, sometimes I take different color T-shirts. I take like a green T-shirt, a teal T-shirt, a black T-shirt, and I ask Susan to hold it. You know, behind the flower. And because, you know, that, that makes the flower stand up. Someone posted a flower the other day. And again, our, our, uh, our group is good for getting comments. They had a, the picture, uh, a flower with a white background, and then they added a sky or something like that. And they asked for the opinion. And most people like just the white background. But the background, as you've seen in these pictures, is really uh, – I don't want to say it's as important as the uh, as the main subject, but it's very important. This one, you know, how creative is this from uh, from Marty? I love the picture, but I love the way he has a black background there. You know, maybe he used a black T-shirt or, or or just masked it out. I don't know. I love this like the way the the leaves here are framing the white petals there. I think we have a lot of pictures here with the dew drops on them or, or water droplets. And that white frame there, it really makes it uh, stand out. So we hope, uh, my friends, can we go back on the screen, Alec? Or uh, We can try. Okay, if not, we just want to thank everybody for uh, viewing. So the, next, so the next live event 
The next live event is Saturday. Is that correct, Alec? It is Saturday <laughs> at uh, Saturday yeah. at at eleven. Eleven. Saturday at eleven. It's it's going to be all about uh, printing. So if anybody is interested in asking who uh, my friend George, who I call the Ansel Adams of printing, uh, tune in here. I don't think we're going to be showing any pictures. But it's just going to be a conversation, Alec, myself, and the Ansel Adams of printing, my friend George. Uh, uh, we're going to be having a good discussion because I know Alex is printing a lot. I'm printing a lot. And talk about the therapeutic process of photography, seeing that print, seeing that print come out the uh, come out of that printer. There's is, nothing uh, like holding it in your hand. There just is nothing like it. There's nothing like holding it in your hand. And George is the master. You know, I make my own prints. But George is, he could talk about calibration, he could talk about different papers, he could talk about, uh, uh, you know, color temperature, uh, all this stuff. So I think he'd really like that. And then after that, uh, we have uh, Linda on Monday. Right. Uh, med meditation Monday. So what we're trying to do, my friends, uh, is we're trying to do a lot of these live events to keep us uh, sane. Jay says thank you. Another great happy hour, says Jennifer. We're really trying to give someone an escape from uh, from the craziness. And I think uh, meditation does that, and I think photography does that too. Thank so we you. want to wrap up and say thanks to yeah, Alex. Yeah. So let me. So just Rick, I don't I don't like to cut you off, but uh, oh, you can. Uh, we had a we had a question. So I thank uh, I thank you for the question uh, from Gretchen. It is going to be just like today, so it's going to be a, a live session on on Facebook Facebook live session. So, yes, uh, we, we, we like the Facebook live sessions because we can see all the comments and we can't see the people, but um, sometimes it's easier that when we do the happy hour with Juan, that's a Zoom. So we, we go, we're, we're relatively new at this. Oh, Mike Cullivan says uh, thanks. Again, great images. Mike always says thanks. Well, I got to thank Mike. He makes the best lobsters like I've ever had in my life. But anyway, thank you all so much. Uh, thank you, Alec, for... Uh, setting this up so we'll say goodbye uh alec and then uh after we quit this let's just come uh, back on skype you and i and have uh and uh, talk about the next show terrific and uh, we'll see you saturday